Hi, everybody. Janet Harley, your host for Faith in an Ever-Changing World, Encouragement and Hope. And it is my pleasure to have with me Deborah Moore. Hi, Deborah, and thank you for joining me today. Hi, Janet. I'm so <laughs> happy to be here. Yeah. Deborah is just so many things. The Lord has her so busy. She is a mental health advocate, a faith-based film actress and screenwriter and public speaker. Wow. You stay busy. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But uh, thank you again for joining me and thank you all. Uh, right after our brief intro, we will be back to talk with Deborah Moore. Stay with us. And hey. we're back. <laughs> uh, Deborah, if you will, in this season, tell us what God has given you to do. And how is faith helping you do it? Well, I just want to thank you so much for having me today, Janet. Oh, and welcome. the name of your show, Faith in an Ever-Changing World, is just so apropos for our mm -hmm. today's world yes. that we live in. It is an ever-changing <laughs> world. Yeah. And it's really hard to keep up, actually. Yes. Uh, but I think that like we were talking about before, the Lord really wants us to try. Mm. And when we have a testimony, when we have something that I am just so proud of the Lord for what he's done for me, for what mm. he's done for my family, mm. and we need to tell somebody. Yeah. <laughs> we, need to, we need to have our testimony told. Yeah. Uh, if, if it can help someone, if it can uh, be a hope to someone, that's where my story is. Um, I started out in Mobile, Alabama. Mm. I know you're in North Carolina, and that's yes. a southern, southern type place, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, in, in Alabama, everyone was very traditional. And um, basically, my uh, family, uh, my father was in the Air Force, and my mother was a stay-at-home mom and travel so we were in florida we were in alabama we were in alaska we were in california and wow. things became hard for her uh, as a young mother she had me she had my brother and then she had a miscarriage mm. and then the postpartum depression that hit her she didn't know how to handle my father didn't know how to handle mm -hmm. uh and it resulted in uh, some psychosis. Mm. And basically that psychosis wasn't treated. It wasn't noticed on the outside. She looked fine. Mm -hmm. And then she decides that uh, as a Christian, the best place for her and her children to be would be heaven. And so my father was always traveling. He was always uh, working out of town. And she was there alone with the children. Mm -hmm. And so basically, uh, she prepared. She went to the hardware store. She purchased a gun. Uh, she wow. she uh, made plans. She made preparation. She mm -hmm. had a plan. She even talked with me about it as a seven-year-old girl and said, okay, Deborah, um, or, you know, would you like to go to heaven? And as a seven-year-old girl, mm -hmm. I was thinking, Sure, I want to go to heaven. I've been to Sunday school. It sounds like a great place, you know. <laughs> but oh, I really didn't goodness. understand what she was talking about sure. and how could I, right? Mm. And so basically, um, I said, if I can take my dolls, sure, I'll go to heaven. And um, and so it was planned. We were all going to go to heaven. Mm. And unfortunately, uh, her mental health had deteriorated. She had a terrible postpartum, again, uh, that turned into psychosis, that turned into basically paranoid schizophrenia. Uh, and she uh, laid my brother and I down on a bed and shot us both in the back three times and shot herself three times. 
Oh my. And I believe that there was a supernatural intervention. I believe that the angels were there. I believe that God was all over it. I believe mm -hmm. he redirected the bullets, just nano millimeter. Yeah. Yes. And and no one died. <laughs> we all survived. And basically, you know, this is my story for the people in our lives who are dealing with serious mental illness with their with their family. Mm -hmm. um, if if God can bring restoration and reconciliation and forgiveness to me and mm -hmm. my family, He can definitely bring it to you <laughs> because. Um, because I went through this experience with my mother, of course, uh, right after that, she went into a uh, mental health facility, of course. Mm -hmm. um, my brother and I went to live with our maternal grandmother, who was struggling with a lot of mental health issues herself, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and undiagnosed, untreated. And so the, the home life was really terrible <laughs> and yeah. so basically what we had what what happened was is you know we would be sent off to orphanages we would be uh marginalized and all of this was something that i needed jesus for <laughs> yes definitely and, so, and and you know most people you know they cringe when you say orphanage but for me it was wonderful mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I got to have friends there. We went to church, mm -hmm. Church of Christ Orphanage, and I went to church one Sunday, Janet, and I walked that aisle, and I accepted Jesus into my heart as my Savior as a little oh. eight-year-old. Oh. And oh. I believe that Jesus died for my sin. I believe mm -hmm. that Jesus could be my mother and could be my father and that could help me. Mm -hmm. And he came into my heart to live, and I, I changed. I had hope. I had mm -hmm. something, you know, stable, some yeah. stability. Yeah. And then fast forward to uh, moving to Dallas, Texas, getting married, having babies, having a family, starting a family. And I had basically turned my back on anything mental health related. I was not interested in that. Mm -hmm. I had felt like I did my time with that. You <laughs> yeah. did. Through. Yes. I did. <laughs> yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I did a lot of work. I went to women's Bible study. I went to church. I read the Bible. Mm -hmm. I sought the Lord. I sought the authority of the Bible over myself and over my family. And God really showed up in a big way. And then one of my uh, children started exhibiting signs of mental health issues. Oh, my goodness. And I'm like, no, God, no, I've already done this. I'm not going back. I'm to not <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. Yeah. He said, oh, you are going to do it and I'm going to help you. And so I went to a lady at my church and we had a mental health ministry at my church. Isn't that something that God would yes. do? Yes. We had a mental health ministry at my church and I oh. went to her and I told her what was going on, that there was erratic behavior, that there were behavioral issues. I didn't know what I was looking at, but I was afraid of what I was looking at, as most parents are when they run into this type of thing. And she said, well, you're dealing with the mental health behavior. Uh, we have a class for that. It's called a NAMI, N-A-M-I, National Alliance of Mental Illness, mm -hmm. org, family to family class. Mm. She began to explain to me everything they talked about in the class. And then I went home to my husband and said, these people know exactly what is happening in our personal home. How is that? <laughs> yeah. And they yeah. know what to do and they know how to help us. And so I, I, we did go to the class. We both went to the class. We got help. Uh, my, my loved one that had a mental health issue, uh, we didn't know what to do before the class. And then after the 12 week class, we were able to speak with them. We were able to communicate with them better. We were, were able to empathize with them. We were able to give them help. We were able to tailor our responses towards this person that mm -hmm. they were, not the person we thought they were, not the person yeah. we thought they should be, but the yeah. person they were mm -hmm. presently. Yes. And 
it was an amazing outcome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my loved one went into mental illness recovery and was able to finish school, was able to get a job, was able to buy a condo, buy a car, yeah. get a license. Wonderful. And right well, now she's living in mental health recovery. How about that? It's a miracle. That is wonderful. It's yeah, a what a blessing. Miracle. What a blessing. Absolutely. And so oh. if anybody is struggling with mental health issues, mm -hmm. get educated. Uh, there's so much out there. Pray yeah. and ask the Lord to send you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Deborah, thank you so very much uh, and uh, uh, for that. And I want to put up your information here. Now, you can connect with Deborah on Facebook. So please, if you and of course, if, if they want information uh, for on mental health, uh, I'm sure Deborah will be happy to help you get connected uh, to the right people. Yes, yes. Oh, what a blessing you are to so many uh, in this area. And uh, thank you for uh, opening your heart and for telling uh, your story and what God has you doing, uh, of course, and you move on faith every day, yes. uh, being able to speak uh, to people about it and being able to be a blessing uh, to families. So thank you for sharing that. And and I want to have you back again, Deborah, because uh, we didn't uh, get to uh, into your acting and screenwriting. So uh, interested in that. So we well, and I would love to come back and talk about that because yes. uh, I have written a bioptic of my life and it, wow. it is about the forgiveness and restoration of Jesus Christ. And I have forgiven my mother and I have forgiven my father and I have forgiven all my family members. And I live in a state of complete forgiveness thanks to Jesus Christ. That is wonderful. How free is that? Yes, Amazing. freedom. Absolutely. Thank you, Deborah, again. And thank you all for watching. And also, I want to thank Creative Motion Network and Abundant Television Network. Have faith and look up, friends, where our help comes from. Bye. God bless. Mm -hmm.